In the seaside town of Hove, a new day begins early at the ZT gym for the former MMA fighter and now ZT owner, Sol Gilbert. A typical start to my day is arriving on site, making sure that, you know, that I've got my diary planned for the rest of the day. So I go, go out to the back office, log on, make sure that my, my phone's synced up, so make sure that everything's sort of coordinating with each other. Then I'll come out, have a shake, have a protein shake, um, and get ready with my first client to start the day, you know, which is generally about 6.30 a.m. I try and give each client an hour, you know, at least, and, um, and keep consistent throughout the morning, really. After training uh, a few few clients, then what I'll do is I'll have a mid-morning snack, which will be probably scrambled eggs. Uh, generally tends to be carb-free, so I like to incorporate lean meat, so that'd be either pro, uh, some form of protein, so either chicken, uh, ham or turkey. Um, mix it up next door in the kids' fit school, cook that up so it's nice and fresh. And uh, once I've finished that, then I'm back to carrying on with the rest of my duties, really. Now a fitness entrepreneur, Sol came from a background where fitness, strength and technique was the key to his survival. Competing at the forefront of British MMA, with a record of 9 and 5, Sol's training and style was built on the foundations of hard work and no holds barred. This could be it, Rob. This could be it now. Tarek Gaiter. Most people, I'm probably uh, known for my, you know, when I was competing in uh, in MMA back in the days of the Cage Rage days. Um, there was a real good sort of vibe around that sort of era, really. You know, there's the likes of me, uh, Alex Reed, Lee Murray, James Zichick, Jean Silva, you know, Mark Queer, you know, all these kind of people, Curtis Stout, you know, all these kind of guys that have sort of, you know, really sort of uh, brought MMA to the spotlight. Long before the UFC sort of came to the UK soil, um, this was the most sort of a prolific sort of platform to sort of fight from. You know, I was very blessed to be able to be invited and, you know, sort of classed as a poster boy for that organisation. Had a great relationship with Dave and Andy. Um, they always knew that no matter what, when they booked Sol Gilbert to fight on their shows, it was, I was just bell to bell. You know, I'd stand in the middle of that cage and just hopefully, do you know what I mean, that person would have the same attitude as me and would just throw down and see who's the better man on the night. You know, I was never afraid to uh, take the risk. And I feel that's what you know makes a good fighter. You know, in some somebody who's a risk taker, somebody that's prepared to stand in the middle and say, right, okay, let's just punch this out now and see who's got the best, who's got either the hard, better chin or the more accurate shot. Obviously, MMA is a big part of my life. You know, I've built my life around the sport. You know, for the last 10 years, you know, I've been involved in the sport from an amateur right the way through to a professional, right the way through to somebody that's contended for, you know, for titles and for, you know, people that are currently in the UFC right now. So uh, it's, it's a very, very big part of my life. And now I've, what I've had to do is, is to tailor make my sort of my personal training, which I call it ultimate training because it's, it's got a bit of a play on words there um, because it's not just personal training. I don't just stand there, talk to them and, and become a counsellor. My job is to make sure that I get the maximum out of them as you know within that hour. Um, same as if a fighter came to me for, you know, for, to get conditioned for his camp, he'd expect the same level of service. So I've now put that into, uh, into a format which I now train the rest of my clients in the same sort of way. Obviously certain fitness levels will they'll be tapered down depending on the individual, which we do that with a pre-body uh, body analysis. Um, that shows me exactly where they are physically and also mentally as well. I sit down and have a chat with them and find out where they are, you know, where they want to be and what sort of time they're looking to achieve these goals. Then I put them into a realistic plan and uh, that's what we work towards. You know, and I'm very grateful to MMA because what that's given me is such a broad spectrum of conditioning, whether it be pulling sleds, flipping tyres, hill sprints, whatever you know, that we need to do to get that person fit. You know, you can guarantee an MMA athlete has tried that. Sol's unique style of training has gained him an array of clientele.
close friend and SGUT student Katie Price regularly trains at the ZT gym. Uh, well, I've known Sol since I was about 16 and training with him, I was on and off last year, not for long, but this time I've been continuous for about two months now. All I know is with Sol, he doesn't let you stop and I moan and moan, but he still makes me finish it. So even if I'm like on my deathbed on the floor, he won't care, he'll still make me continue and that, that's good. But I don't get bored, he mixes it up all the time. It's not like, I always think that if you're going to go to the gym, you're going to go on the treadmill, go on the bike, and I just think it's boring, so he mixes it up all the time. But there's no way I could come here and train on my own. If it, if it wasn't for salt, then I wouldn't be able to do it. So I always recommend if anyone can get a personal trainer, that's the way forward, because they just push you that extra. Well, everyone knows, you know, he runs the gym, he's like the main man here, he's been a fighter, he knows all about getting into shape, nutrition, he just knows everything. And like I say, he's passionate about it and, that, and you can see that. Currently teaching a class at the ZT gym as a special guest, a former ZT student, current UFC welterweight, John Hathaway. You know, I'm, I'm a UFC fighter now and stuff, but uh, when I started out, I was uh, 17, it was the first time where I met Sol Gilbert. I actually came down um, to the gym, it was in Peacehaven at the time, and it was the, the first CT fight school that he'd opened. And uh, again, we met there and uh, just I started training with uh, the kind of grapplers and wrestlers and kind of had a natural talent and Sol saw that and uh, brought me through and kind of got me into MMA more. Um, rather than I was just kind of grappling and, and wrestling at that point with, with the goal of getting into MMA, but he really uh, you know, brought me into it and, and showed me what it was like and started me on the, on the road to where I am now. Yeah, he's a good coach, he's, he's very hard on you. <laughs> he uh, makes you kind of like push you through your paces and uh, make sure you're fit. I mean, it's the one thing what him and London Shoot always do, like where, where he's, uh, again, he, he was a fighter that came up through London Shoot before he opened up his own place. But, um, you know, they always make sure you're, you're fit to fight. If you're going to lose a fight, it's definitely not going to be through say lack of fitness and, and cardio and not being able to go the distance, you know. It's great atmosphere. I used to used to work here as well. Is when I started out, I used to work here as a, as a gym instructor and stuff and it made it a bit easier to fit my training kind of uh, around that. But again, you know, since I haven't been working here, it's, it's been great. I know all the people who do work here now and we, we train together regularly and uh, it's just a nice, nice vibe and nice friendly atmosphere. Whilst the ZT gym is a thriving facility, it hasn't been an easy road for Seoul and the ZT team. We started ZT Fight School um, in Peacehaven back in 2004. Um, at the same time, I was competing on Cage Rage, and you know, for me, it was getting a bit tedious to keep having to go across the country to train at various sort of um, sort of facilities. You know, and even in my local town in Brighton, you know, I'd have to go down to one gym to do my boxing sparring, another gym to do my strength and conditioning, and then and then go travel to London to do my Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. You know, until I joined London Shoot Fighters, then I had everything underneath one uh, under one roof. But at that sort of time, I, I felt that there was a real gap in the market down here for a facility that had everything that I needed personally. And I, and I knew that MMA was going to take off and I knew the sort of, you know, the vibe that I was getting from the sport that it was going to go to big places. So I thought I'd rather sort of set up a school which I could, I could therefore show what I know to, to my students, uh, which I was starting to have a few sort of guys come and train with me like John Hathaway, Ryan White, Jack McGee, you know, and uh, various other sort of fighters as well, uh, Neil Ray, amateur boxers as well, and um, even as young as Christopher Eubanks, who's now turned over and he's had his second pro fight. You know, he, uh, Chris, the, his dad was bringing him to train with me as well um, at the same sort of time. So I knew that by bringing a place that had everything under one roof, like a matted area, a boxing ring, a strength and conditioning area, treatment rooms, that it would go places and it would do very well. So. That was back in 2004. We've moved four or five sites. We've opened multiple facilities. Some have worked, some haven't, to be fair. Do you know what I mean? And, but yet again, I've always adapted the same approach that you've got to take risks. You know, whether it's in a cage, whether it's in business, you know, in life to get somewhere, there, there has to be an element of risk. If you play it safe, then you're just going to be playing darts at the weekend or playing football with your little five-a-side friends or you're going to be you know working for a, an estate agent or something that's you know when there's a property boom on because that's safe yeah if you want to be if you want to go somewhere in life and just want to know that you've succeeded at something take that risk put yourself out there and give it a go now a proud father of three Saul had to make a vital decision as he approached the crossroads of MMA fighter and full-time businessman 
So in life, you know, everything I've taken has been extremely um, serious. And in business, I've had to adapt the same approach. You know, I've got three children, you know, uh, Ethan, who's 11, Boston, who's six, and Jersey, my daughter, who's 10 months. Yeah, he's a great father, um, great friend. We get on really well. We're pretty much with each other 24 seven. The weekends, which we have free, we pretty much do just everything for the children. You know, that's, our, that's our life, really. We've been uh, well, running now for a year and a half. Yeah it's, going, yeah, it's going great. I mean, parties, we do really well with the parties. We can, uh, they can come in and have a party during the week, weekends, or we also do exclusive hire as well, where we, um, the children come in and it's easy for the parents. We do the invitations, we do the food, we do um, party games, pretty much everything, so the parent doesn't have to worry about anything. You know, and I've had to make a decision, you know, a conscious decision, you know, what's going to provide a better lifestyle for them? You know, is it going to be chasing the UFC dream or is it going to be, you know, uh, working hard, you know, working 14, 15 hour days, you know, five, six days a week, you know, to put food on the table and, and make sure that, you know, that the money comes in to pay the private school fees and, and to go to nice holidays at the end of Christmas time, you know, and, um, and you know, <laughs> I'll tell you what also helped make me make that decision, sparring John Hathaway. You know, sparring him, you know, when he was when he was like 10, 11 and 0, and you know, he was he, he was hard work. Hard work. And then when we got him to the UFC and he started taking his training to the next level, you know, he was even harder work. And I thought, this this is a hard, hard job if I've got to keep going down this road. You know, it's you know, it's got I've got to be training four or five hours every single day to condition myself, to learn. And I'm, you know, I just had to make the decision and that was why I sort of trans transferred my energies into the business. And uh, to be honest with you, I don't regret a thing. You know, do I, do I, will I want to fight again? Nah. Do I miss it? Yeah. But, you know, this is my fight now. You know, making this a good brand, making this a good business, you know, keeping the food on the table for my children and giving them the best start that I could possibly do as a parent. That's my fight. Thriving on the south coast of England, Equipped with a team that are true masters of their disciplines, and Sol's sheer no-nonsense determination fuels his new fight and venture outside of the cage. With a unique brand and an ever-growing clientele, the future is looking bright for the ZT Gym. You want to kill her? Do you want to take her to her